In this video, we provide intuitive perspectives for understanding dynamical systems that exhibit oscillatory behavior. Romeo and Juliet will help us visualize oscillations as orbits in a plane. We will develop intuition regarding the types of trajectories we can get in terms of the angles at which null kinds pass through critical points in face portraits. In the last half of the video, we will discuss how dynamical systems expected to produce spiral sinks can be modified through time delays or through stochastic excitation to support sustained oscillations. We begin with Romeo and Juliet. J is the love that Juliet professes for Romeo, and R is the love Romeo professes for Juliet. When both J and R are positive, Juliet and Romeo both profess love. When J and R are both negative, Juliet and Romeo both profess hate. When J is positive and R is negative, Juliet expresses unrequited love, and Romeo expresses hate, and Romeo and Juliet exchange roles when instead J is negative and R is positive. When Romeo expresses love, Juliet is inspired to increase the love that she expresses. For simplicity in this model, the time derivative of the love that Juliet expresses is positively proportional to Romeo's love, with proportionality coefficient 1. When Romeo expresses hate, r is less than 0 and djdt is negative, downward arrows. Juliet does not want to pursue Romeo when Romeo appears to resent her company. When instead Romeo expresses love, r is greater than 0 and djdt is positive, upward arrows. In this situation, Juliet has hope that increased affection can nurture her romance with Romeo. To include drama in this model, Romeo professes decreasing amounts of love while listening to Juliet profess her love for him. The time derivative of the love Romeo expresses for Juliet is negatively proportional, with coefficient 1 to the love expressed by Juliet. When Juliet professes love, J is greater than 0 and DRDT is negative, arrows to the left. Romeo interprets Juliet's love as an indication that he can exploit her goodwill by becoming rude and unromantic. When Juliet professes hate, J is less than zero, meaning that DRDT is positive, arrows to the right. Romeo heeds Juliet's scorn as a warning that he must plead for the opportunity to rescue their relationship. The distinction between Romeo and Juliet's psychology is represented by the presence of a negative sign in the equation for DRDT that is absent from the equation for DJDT. This orients the components of the quivers of the direction field in a counterclockwise circuit. Romeo and Juliet chase each other around in a perpetual soap opera. In addition to the graphical analysis we have just illustrated, we can understand that the differential equations on this page lead to oscillatory dynamics by taking the time derivative of the second equation, the one containing dr dt. d squared r dt squared equals negative dj dt. Into this equation, we substitute the first equation on the page, dj dt equals r, to obtain d squared r dt squared equals negative r. Taking a derivative twice brings us back to the original object with a negative sign out front. Comparison with the video tutorials on differentiation and Taylor expansions reminds us that this pattern corresponds to the sinusoidal functions, and hence r and j trace out a circle of some amplitude here called a naught in a counterclockwise fashion. One ingredient we can use when building a dynamical system to model oscillatory behavior is the inclusion of a negative sign in one equation and a positive sign in the other, as illustrated in the equations djdt equals positive r and drdt equals negative j. We've just developed an understanding of oscillation in terms of quivers on direction fields and signs in differential equations. In the next section, we consider the angles at which null kinds pass through critical points on phase portraits. Suppose the direction field for Romeo's dynamics includes a vertically oriented null cline. Along this line, drdt equals zero, meaning nowhere on this line can the system have horizontal motion. To the left, drdt might be positive, meaning motion toward the right, and to the right we might have negative values of drdt, meaning motion toward the left. This null cline is an example of a sign change, where the blue arrows momentarily have no length as they switch directions. Suppose that the direction field for Juliet's dynamics includes a horizontal null cline above which we have negative values of djdt, meaning downward motion, and below which we have positive values of djdt, meaning upward motion. 
This configuration corresponds to an asymptotically stable star. To consider a slightly different system, we rotate the null clines counterclockwise through an angle of pi over 4. This configuration corresponds to an asymptotically stable spiral. By rotating the null clines counterclockwise through an additional angle of pi over 4, we obtain a closed orbit. Rotating the null clines again yields an unstable spiral. In addition to finding eigenvectors and eigenvalues at the critical points of linear and almost linear systems as we have previously done, we can intuitively think about system trajectories by analyzing the slopes of null clines. We can investigate how adjustments to parameters in differential equations alter the slopes of null clines where null clines intersect. In the last two sections, we provided perspectives for understanding systems of traditional differential equations. In the next two sections, we give examples of how dynamical systems expected to yield spiral sinks can be modified through time delays or through stochastic excitation to produce sustained oscillations. This direction field appears to create a spiral sink. It is not possible to sustain this example of a closed orbit because the trajectory everywhere crosses rather than runs parallel along the quivers. We introduce a set of modifications to generate sustained oscillations based on this underlying direction field. We freeze the animation to capture the system at the position marked as the current state. The local direction field points as partially inside the circle rather than guiding us to move in a purely upward direction. Allow the system to remember its past positions, including this one. As an expression of nostalgia, the system performs at the current time the motion that it was supposed to have performed as it passed through the previous state. By prescribing dynamics in the present according to a position from the past, we have obtained an instruction, the vertical yellow arrow, that guides the system along the edge of the circle and sustains our orbit, rather than pushing us into the circle center. We just saw one example of how a dynamical system having a spiral sink could be modified to sustain oscillations. The next example is particularly interesting when a spiral sink is highly skewed with the eye of the storm pressed against the rain bands to one side, here toward the top of the screen. The solutions to this system move in ever closer to the sink. As we mentioned in the video tutorial on Protein Dynamics 101, dynamical models studied in biology are often smoothed approximations to dynamics that would more realistically be described as granular and stochastic. A more realistic trajectory might jiggle off the deterministic solution. While in some regions of state space the jiggles can leave the rough qualitative shape of the trajectory unchanged, the fluctuations can also kick the system away from the deterministic steady state far enough to catch one of the rapidly flowing streams, carrying the system around for another lap. The presence of long arrows smushed up next to the sink means that the system can be carried around a large loop if it can make a small jump away from the critical point. Stochastic fluctuations lay down a bridge allowing for such escape. In this video, we have reviewed four concepts that we can use to understand oscillatory dynamics. Having a negative sign appear in one of a pair of differential equations can orient quivers in a direction field so as to form a loop. Twisting null clines can alter the trajectories near a critical point, converting a system that cannot sustain oscillations to a system that can sustain oscillations and vice versa. Time delays and stochastic excitation allow us to convert spiral sinks to repeated orbits.